Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about how you can calibrate the material model when you only have a temperature sweep DMA test, which is a test that I often do to measure the modulus as a function of temperature. But if that's all you have, can you calibrate the material model to it? This is part of my series when I talk about what to do to calibrate the material model when you have very limited experimental data available. And uh, I'm going to focus today on HITREL HDR 8724. And I talked in another video about uniaxial tension data for this material. Today I'm going to focus on the figure to the left and the storage and the loss modulus as a function of temperature. And when you have data like that, the obvious thing to try is a linear elastic with temperature dependent uh, response. That's something you can calibrate in M calibration, the software I'm going to use for this study. I'm using in this case a linear elastic material model with eight uh, temperature data points. And I calibrated it to both the storage and the loss modulus data here. Of course, this kind of model will not predict any loss modulus. It's purely uh, elastic. Uh, but we can get a good match of the elastic modulus as a function of temperature. So this is the basic uh, model that one can use. The question here is, can we do better than this? Uh, because this model obviously doesn't predict any loss. It's purely elastic. Can we not use the loss modulus at least to some approximate way? That's what I'm going to talk about today. And the obvious first thing to try is to use, well, how about linear viscoelasticity? You're going to add in a linear elastic spring with the Prony series relaxation function. That by itself is not enough because we have temperature data. We need to make this temperature dependent. I'm going to add a WLF uh, temperature factor scaling for this model. And I, I just add this into M calibration. I have a one prony series term here in my example. Of course, we don't have a fre frequency sweep. Is it enough to check out just a single prony series terms? Let's find out. In this case, I will set initially the fitness weight to be 0 0.8, 0 0.9 actually, for the storage modulus. And then I use 0 0.1 for the loss modulus. We'll see that this type of linear viscoelastic material model with WLF equation can predict the storage modulus as a function of temperature, which is really exciting, obviously. But if you look at the figure to the right, the loss modulus is absolutely poorly predicted. It's way too high. And if you were thinking about this for a while, you probably can understand why that is. This is a single prony series term, and that tend to uh, get a very high loss modulus uh, in that case. What we can do to explore this a little bit more, in M calibration, I can set the fitness weights to be equal for the storage and the loss modulus. So it's same material model. I just trying to emphasize both the storage and the loss modulus. This model can't do it as we see here. When I set the equal weight, we ended up matching the loss modulus in this case, but we have a very poor prediction of the storage modulus. Still not a particularly good approach. Here again is something that you may have seen before with a single prony series term linear viscoelastic model. You get a very sharp change in storage modulus with temperature and a very quick and high peak in the loss modulus. And that's simply because of the single prony series terms. All action happen at that point. Another way we can do this, and this is a, a nice feature where we can, instead of using a single prony series term, we use a spectrum, a lot of prony series terms that follow a given equation. And that's something I talked about in some of my other videos. Here in M calibration, the spectrum is represented using uh, two, three parameters. So it's very easy to calibrate. And uh, here are the results when I calibrate a linear elastic prony series spectrum and a WLF equation to this data set. And we can see that the predictions actually look quite good this time. The storage modulus look pretty good up until about 320, something like that, degrees Kelvin. After that, we don't capture the reduction in storage modulus, but the loss modulus looks pretty good. So here's a model that's a linear viscoelastic model that we calibrated to the data and it looks pretty good. Uh, but perhaps we can do even better, and I'll come to that. Before we get there, though, let's take a look at the predictions of this model to something we don't have data for. So this would be kind of a, a virtual test, uh, as I would usually call them. So here's frequency sweeps predictions from this very specific Prony series model. So frequency sweeps uh, here at different temperatures specifically. We'll see that it's a very, very wide spectrum of responses, 10 to the 20, 10 to the minus 19 on uh, minus 19 here. So it's a very wide spectrum and it are shifted left and right based on the WF equation. 
and that's what happens in this case. And the mall, in fact, have to have such a broad spectrum because it's missing the temperature dependence of the elastic response. So that's the next thing to try. What if we make the linear elastic response also temperature dependent and we add a prony series with the WLF equation? So we have both elastic temperature dependence and the prony series relaxation temperature dependence. Does that help us? And it does. So here are the results. I calibrated this with M calibration again. I ended up just selecting for simplicity three temperature dependence terms in the linear elastic model. And they are specified here on the left to the, in the, as you can see in the table. And then I use a, a prony spectrum that I just mentioned with WLF. I calibrate all of this at once to the data and I get the good predictions of the storage modulus. I get a good prediction of the loss modulus. 9% relative error between all of these. It's actually quite nice. This is an equal fit to both data sets in this case. What we see if we do this virtual prediction of the DMA frequency sweep, again, the frequency sweeps look pretty good. But now we can see very interesting differences compared to the previous one. In the virtual frequency sweeps here, the curves are not simply shifted left and right due to the WLF equation. They're also going down with temperature, and that's because of the linear elastic response softens with temperature and that is uh, helping us crack, crack uh, the challenge of what to do with the loss modulus in an accurate way and the, the look on the figure to the right the loss modulus has a peak that is highly dependent on the temperature not something we get with the traditional uh, linear viscoelastic material model. this is again due to the temperature dependence of the elastic response it's very interesting. The next thing we can see by looking at this is that the width of the transition is significantly uh, narrower than when we didn't have a temperature dependent elastic modulus. So that's something that comes with this model. And I would think that that's more realistic. Of course, we don't have data to prove that, but that seems to be a realistic feature of this addition to the model. So to summarize, if we try to compare these models, the easiest way and the traditional way to analyze temperature sweep data is basically to find the, uh, the modulus as a function of temperature. And if you do that, you end up at the given temperature, as I plotted here, stress strain curves at a room temperature uh, at different strain rates. So the top left figure shows the, um, the linear elastic with temperature dependence, just the curve rate has no influence. And that's not true, as we know, for these types of materials. The figure to the right is the linear elastic with the prony series and WLF. So linear elastic is not temperature dependent in this case, and we see a strain rate dependence. We have a prony series that we calibrated from the temperature frequency of temperature data. Very interesting. And it looks pretty reasonable. And the figure to the lower left is the model that would be the most accurate, probably. This is linear elastic with temperature dependence plus a prony series spectrum plus the WLF. And this is relatively similar to the to the case when we calibrated it uh, without the, the temperature dependence of the linear elastic. So these are the results. So what do we learn here, right? When it comes down to this, uh, which model is the best? We don't know because this is uh, something we don't have data for. Um, clearly the most conservative approach is to assume just a linear elastic with temperature dependence. That is clearly all the data we have. But I think that in many cases, where being a little bit bolder and a little bit more brave and, and applying the, the theory that I talked about here, you can come up with a linear elastic temperature dependent model that likely will be significantly more accurate. But there is not a complete uniqueness in these parameters. We would need to have more data to do this actually very properly. I would recommend additional frequency sweep data, experimentally obtaining that. But even if you don't have it, here's a method that you can apply to get a model that is temperature dependent and strain rate dependent, and uh, and it captures both the storage and the loss modulus. So so that's uh, that's it for today. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.